Joining us now, New York Times foreign affairs columnist, Thomas Friedman, author of a number of bestsellers, including The Lexus and The Olive Tree. Tom, thanks for being with us. There's been a lot of movement today from Republicans around President Trump and impeachment. Given all we've seen from McConnell's stance on impeachment to, you know, Liz Cheney now starting to publicly say they'll vote to impeach President Trump, do you think this is a tipping point for President Trump? Yeah, I think, um, Anderson, what we've seen today is um, he is going to be impeached, and he's going to be impeached to some degree, we don't know how much, in a bipartisan way by Democrats and Republicans. And I think that's a very important message. It's a very important message to um, people who want to do this again, and it's a very important message to history. Um, uh, the mark of, of shame is going to be on Trump's forehead forever, as it deserves to be. He will be the first president in history to have been twice impeached, and he deserves it. No. When you look at these scenes, I just want to say one yeah. thing, because you, you've done so well tonight, Anderson, CNN, uh, my paper, others. We're now learning so much more about what happened up there that day, um, not just about the people who were tragically murdered but uh, and, and died in this, but also just the amount of planning that went into it. Yeah. I think once we fully understand it, <laughs> once we fully understand it, we're going to want to impeach him a third time. Yeah, I mean, the, the, as the more the details of it come out and the personal acts of horror and viciousness, it, it's just, it, it just gets worse and worse. You know, the last time I interviewed you was January 4th, two days before this attack. You said then, you said Wednesday is going to be a historic day in American history. It'll be the first time in our history that we will see a legislative attempt at a coup d'etat in the United States of America. In the darkest corners of your mind, did you ever think you would see the president of the United States inciting a, not a legislative coup d'etat, uh, inciting an insurrection against his own government? You know, um, a friend of mine, Dove Seidman, I was talking to him about it, Anderson, and he said, I'm shocked but not surprised. I think we're all shocked, but we're not surprised because we know that everything was leading up to this, that this was a president who kept going through red lights, and he was enabled by a media ecosystem to do that, and he was enabled by his party to do that. So the actual scenes of it, they are shocking. I couldn't have predicted it. But at the end of the day, we're not surprised. You know, I remember seeing you in the lobby of a hotel in Egypt in the midst of the revolution, and it was a really scary day. I was, I was, I've seen a lot, and I was very scared that day. Um, you've been to a lot of civil wars. Uh, you know, I was in Rwanda in the genocide briefly. I was in Bosnia. We've, you know, we're in Iraq, Afghanistan. You've been around the world. You've seen a lot. I hear people talking about civil war in America as if they know what they're talking about, as if they know what that looks like. And I, unless you've seen it up close, I mean, it is a horrible, horrible thing. I, I am so upset when I hear these people at rallies, Trump rallies, talking about civil war as if it's some sort of a cleansing. You know, um, Anderson, I lived through about four and a half years of the Lebanese Civil War, and um, th there's one really important lesson you learn. When you break something, when you break a system like that, it is really hard to get it back. And what is so appalling is people, whether they're in the media, whether they're Rupert Murdoch and Lachlan Murdoch, whether they're in politics, some of these Republicans, whether they're running Facebook, who think they can just stress and stress and stress the system for their own glory, you know, their own glory and their own profit, and nothing will happen. And yeah, you know, we've said this before. I just want to ask them: Do you do you go home at night to some offshore island where this doesn't matter? Well, look, um, Rupert and Lachlan you know, got places in Australia. The, believe yeah. me, they'll be on the private jet to Australia. Is yes. Yeah, or on their but, on but the, the rest yacht. of us don't. And and the, the the willingness of people to just stress and stress this system thinking there'll be no implications and doing it for politics or profit. It is just so appalling. I spoke to uh, Chris Krebs last night, the former senior cybersecurity official for the DHS, who was fired by the Trump administration for being honest. He, he said, we're on the verge of what I fear to be a pretty significant breakdown in democracy and civil society here. Do you, do you think he's right? I'll tell you, um, you know, I, I don't know if I'd describe it exactly that way, Anderson, but what, what is so frightening about um, the events that happened on Capitol Hill is how the people there believed that big lie. Yeah. They, they really believed it. They, they weren't faking it. You know, we have to stop and, and remember just how big and appalling that lie was. Anderson, and you and I talked about this once, we actually just had 
the most heroic election, I think, in American history. More Americans turned out to vote than any time in our history. They turned out to vote in the middle of a pandemic. Their neighbors counted the votes. Their secretaries of state and courts affirmed them. This was actually one of the greatest expressions of democracy ever in the world. And Donald Trump took that. And for his own selfish reasons, he turned it into what he called a fraud. And then he turned on his information ecosystem and he made millions and millions of Americans believe it. That to me is worth impeaching just in and of itself. I wish we could impeach him four, five, six times to send the message, you shall never do this again. But what so worries me is because all these people are now marinated in conspiracy theories, getting their news from their own ecosystems, I, I, I just don't know how we break through to that. Why wouldn't the Republican Party now see this as an opportunity? I mean, if they don't, if they don't, you know, and you've written about this, uh, uh, about, you know, the divides in the Republican Party and, and what should happen in the Republican Party for it to reinvent itself and, and rebound from this. But if they don't rid themselves of Trump now, he's going to maintain a grip on them for the, for, you know, the time to come. Well, there was a Canibiac poll the other day. I think it said that 70% of Republicans still are with him. Um, he is the base and the base is the party. And that's why that party has to fracture. I think Trump's only good purpose in life is to keep stressing that party so it blows up. Because if it blows up, the, the, the sort of rump Trump cultists will never have enough power to win a national election. That in itself would be a blessing. And I believe if it blows up, the small principled core of, of principled Republicans, and they are there, people like Mitt Romney and, and, and uh, uh, Senator Murkowski from, from Alaska. Anderson, if just a couple of them are ready to become independents and work with Joe Biden, who has put together really an outstanding cabinet of center-right people, if, if we can actually get a few principled Republicans to work with him, we can actually have a huge problem solvers caucus in the House and the Senate that will actually be able to get things done on infrastructure, health care, education. And so I think there's huge potential. But for the country to thrive, that party, as it is currently constituted, must die. But, you know, it's incredible because four years ago when they were all running against Trump, you know, they all spoke about what he would do to conservatism, what he would do to the Republican Party. They saw the writing on the wall. And yet, once he beat them and they wanted to maintain power and, as you pointed out, have their free parking space at the airport, uh, they went along with it. Yeah, I mean, again, I think what history will talk about is just um, uh, the supine nature of that party. L let's be honest, Anderson. The, the Republican Party has lost its way for a long time. Um, they just had a convention, the, uh, the, the, Demo the Republican convention before the election, where they had no platform. They said their platform is whatever their dear leader wants it to be. And of course, their dear leader just wanted to be whatever served him. That's insane. How could a party do that? I mean, really be honest, this party is actually, it, it really became a political brothel that rented itself out by the night to whoever could energize its base. That's really what they were doing. Sarah Palin, the Tea Party, then Trump. But in the case of Trump, he took over the whole brothel. Tom Friedman, uh, appreciate you being on tonight. Thank you.